charged. <laughs> Just the right amount. <laughs> hey everyone, welcome back to the Armory. It's been a while since I've been in the dating scene, but it seems like it's gotten a lot more complicated, especially with a global pandemic. So what we're gonna try to do is take Herman and an OptiTrack and try to have a socially distant dinner date over the internet. Probably gonna start with Herman trying to make spaghetti. I hope that's easy enough. And then just sitting down and having a dinner date. This setup has three main pieces to it. It has the OptiTrack for tracking my motion. It has a setup inside of Ross that actually calculates and controls the arm itself. And then it has Herman, which is a pretty basic setup. For now, we're just gonna go through the OptiTrack. OptiTrack is a system that locates objects in 3D really accurately. This is a pretty old version of the OptiTrack. The newer one is obviously better, faster, stronger. It's pretty common for OptiTrack to be used in things like games and movies because you can track actors' positions on something like a soundstage and then add the visual effects after the fact. The OptiTrack uses these cameras. You mount them around your room so that collectively they cover your entire area that you're going to be working in. On each camera, there's a ring of IR LEDs. These are the same kind of LEDs that are on your TV remote. So you can't see it by eye, but your camera can see it. They shine out infrared light, which reflects off of these highly reflective silver dots. These dots you use to actually mark different objects, everything else is filtered out. Of course, the OptiTrack, just like Herman, is not a fan of Canadian winters in a poorly insulated shop. Herman won't even turn on, and the OptiTrack started to do some strange things too in the cold. So I had to move all of this into the office. To calibrate the OptiTrack, all you need is three of these reflective dots at a known spacing between them. Then you move it around so that multiple cameras can see the three dots at the same time. You could move this bar around slowly and accurately in front of all the cameras, or... Once you've done all this motion in front of all the cameras, it'll calculate the position of the cameras relative to each other, and it will also calculate the distortion of the lens of each individual camera. An individual camera can tell you a vector on which that dot lies somewhere in your world. If you have two cameras that can see the same dot, you can actually get a pretty accurate location of that dot. Once you can track dots, you can attach multiple to a single object and track the entire object. The setup for Herman is pretty simple. For this, I'm gonna be using an RG2 gripper from OnRobot. So this is a collaborative gripper with force feedback. So you can set how much force you want the gripper to actually apply to the object, how far you want it to open or close, how quickly you want it to do that. So there's a lot of specific control. The other thing you can do is you can actually swap out the fingertips that are on the end of the gripper. A lot of applications benefit from having custom gripper hardware. Now onto Ross. All of this is also gonna be available on GitHub. A lot of this was simulated ahead of time inside a gazebo. It made it so that I could do a lot of work without worrying about actually breaking the arm in case I did anything dumb. The OptiTrack will record the position of a tracker in 3D space and send that into ROS. ROS will take that position and do the inverse kinematics to calculate the joint angles that the robot needs to be at. A quick overview of inverse kinematics, it's calculating the joint angles to get the tip of the arm at a certain location. Once it knows the position that each joint needs to be at, it uses a ROS driver to actually talk to the arm and command it directly over the network. So you end up with a setup something like this. The robot is basically chasing the position that the OptiTrack is feeding it.
Well, now that this seems to sort of work, let's give it something hot to play with. Welcome to Armed and Delicious. Today, Herman and I are gonna make a simple and rustic spaghetti sauce. So first, we're gonna start with some noodles. So, navigate over here. Add them to some aggressively boiling water. Okay, don't need this box anymore. Take off the lid. Don't need that. Grab our bowl of chilled ground beef, and we're just gonna add that into our pan. We're gonna add that into our pan. Into, into the pan. All right, now that we got that perfectly added in there, now it's time for a little spice. Grab that bottle, take it over and give it a few shkluggums. Put that back down. Next, just some canned sauce. Pretty sure Herman can't do a whole lot better than this. Take off the lid. Don't need that anymore. Grab the jar. that over and just gently pour that in. Ta-da! A beautiful spaghetti sauce. So that didn't work out super well. The first thing that would go a really long way for this is having more cameras. I only had two cameras that I was streaming, so I was really limited in what I could actually see, which made it that I would only be comfortable driving the arm very, very slowly. Also, there are small quirks with some robot arms, uh, like joints that can turn infinitely in either direction, like joint six on Herman. Also, singularities, which all robot arms have. Of course, I didn't deal with any of these. If you get close to them, the arm does some undesirable motions. Like I had said before with the gripper, I think designing different fingertip shapes that would have been better for cylindrical objects would have gone a long way to making sure that the gripper didn't drop anything. Like most things, the OptiTrack is susceptible to noise. So if you have reflective things in your room as you're doing this, it can start to create a lot of false objects that the OptiTrack starts to see. It may start to spit out some unexpected positioning. It's time for date night. Dear, I got you a present. Oh, thank you. You shouldn't have. Parched. <laughs> Just the right amount. Did I? I got some. Where else did it go? On my spaghetti. Slow, nice and slow pour. Ooh. Very nice. Can I top you up here? <laughs> yes, you can. I think I would like a little bit more than that. That's good. Thank you. Okay. 
Cheers, man. Cheers to a lovely, safe date night. Oh my god. I got some sauce on all the noodles too. Oh, oh it's delicious. Allow me, Herman. Thank you. Mmm. Delicious. Oh. I obviously had a lot of fun doing this project. The kitchen's a bit of a mess, but that's okay. I'll clean that up tomorrow. Tonight is date night. If you have any questions or comments about what I did, make sure to put that down in the comment section and I'll get back to you. Also, if you like videos like this, make sure to like, subscribe, and then hit the little bell so you get notified when other videos come out. I'm still fairly new to this, so any kind of feedback you have goes a long way for making these videos better. Robots are awesome. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.